So welcome to the channel. On today's episode, I've got my straw hat out because we're going to be doing a little working in the sun here, doing something that is extremely important and something we've been desiring for quite a while. So in today's episode, we're going to show you how to put in a hand-driven well with a hand pump. So I've purchased quite a bit of stuff here. I'll have a full list down in the description if you want to check it out. The majority of this stuff I got off of Amazon. And let me show you why I've chose this specific location right here. And then let's get this well put in. So even though we're in Florida, our house is way up there and it's hard to tell on camera, we're going uphill. There's actually 35 feet of elevation change on this property. So I have come all the way down to one of the low spots on the property, which happens to be right here. And believe it or not, there is a pond out in the woods over there. So I know the water naturally flows to this area and sometimes the ground stays saturated here. So I think this is gonna be one of my best bets for finding water. Some of y'all may have to locate your water a little differently. You know, you'll see some of the people who got there with the copper rods and find the water streams in the ground. But what I'm trying to accomplish here is an area where I know there's shallow water so I don't have to drive a whole heck of a lot of pipe. These hand pitcher pumps do not pull up from very deep. The one that I have is rated for 18 feet maximum. And I'm just trying to avoid a lot of extra trouble. We want to find water and find water quickly. So let's install today's with some very basic tools. I purchased a 36 inch, this is called a Sandpoint well head right here. As you can see, it's got a head that's been bent and sharpened to a point and welded up. This is designed to drive through hard ground. I don't know that I'd be beating this through rock and everything else because you may want to bend in your pipe. On the other end, this is inch and a quarter pipe, your most common size for putting in a hand driven well like this. So all they've done is taken an inch and a quarter piece, 36 inch long of your standard water pipe, drilled a ton of holes in it, wrapped it in a very fine mesh that's underneath this, clamped this around, welded it, and it's just gonna help keep trash and debris out. And that mesh is so fine, it looks like it would keep a lot of the sand out as well, although I'm expecting to get some dirty water. This is a key component of making this work. So now we can put a collar on here, uh, you know, insert another piece of pipe and keep driving this as deep as we need to go. But don't forget, no matter what pitcher pump you go with, they all have maximum ratings. They can't pull up from too terribly far. So speaking of the pump, this one here is from a company called Vivor. Y'all know I work with them a lot on the channel. I really do enjoy working with that company. There is a reason I wanted this one though. A lot of people are familiar with the big red pumps that you see sold on Amazon and other places. The one thing I really don't like about the red pump, we'll call it, it has an open pitcher spout up top. Well, birds are gonna sit and poop all in that. Everything else is going on and it's a very short spout. Some of them are notched to hold a bucket. I really like this design because one, it always stays down, not gonna feel full of poop and everything else, although bugs can climb in here, and it has a really nice catch on the end for a bucket. That's a critical component. The other one with the open up spout, it tends to shoot water out and over the bucket. I think that's a bad design personally. So one thing that concerned me about going with a not nationally known brand pitcher pump was the internals. If you're gonna wind up having to really depend on this, I wanted to make for sure that you could get parts for it. So here's a picture, I took this apart. It happens to use your standard 2.99 inch leather cup. I found those on Amazon, link will be down there. I've then ordered me a spare leather cup for this so I can rebuild it very quickly. I'm talking in the matter of a couple minutes, put a new leather cup in, seals, go right back to work. So it looks to have a standard size seal. That was very important. And I know that's a question that y'all are gonna ask me. All right, so for starters, once you've located an area where you think your water is, go ahead, let's take our pipe cap off the end, our thread protector. We're just gonna use Teflon tape for putting all of this stuff together. Let's put that on. I have some inch and a quarter couplers right here. Put one of those on as well, and let's put our sand point on. So when you first get this sand point whale head right here, turn it over, beat on it really good. I had a lot of metal and other pieces come out of it. I don't really want coming out of my water later on. So now we have our first section of pipe and the sand point ready to go. Now you don't just want to go hitting on your pipe because guess what? you'll damage all the threads on the end and then this whole process is over. So they sell what they call a malleable cap that you put on top that's made just for pounding. Well, they're about 25 bucks, outrageous. Or you can just buy you an extra coupler like this, let it be sacrificial, 
We'll thread it on, get it in as many threads as we can because we don't want to damage those. And then I'll just hit on this, take it back off, move it to the next piece. This is just a sacrificial piece now. They're a lot more affordable than those actual hammerheads. And because this first section is so high, you're gonna to wanna to back a truck up or something else. I'm just gonna stand right here in the backside of our Ranger to beat this in. All right, so stop every so often, especially once you first get started, check level. You're not gonna be able to change level once you get this too terribly far in the ground. So let me go ahead and apologize for the heavy breathing of the camera. I know it's gonna get annoying. I'm fat, I'm out of shape, and this is two hours later. <laughs> the first three to four feet went in like nothing in just a few pounds, a couple minutes. And then, I don't know if I found clay, rock, or what. But the last two hours it's taken just to drive about the same number of feet in. Now is the moment of truth, my friends. Let's uh, see if we got some water down there. So all I did was take a nut, tie it to an end of a string. We're gonna drop it down there, check for water. If there's not water, we gotta put a whole nother section of pipe in. Oh Lord, that'll take me another day or so. Oh, listen at that. Ha <laughs> ha, we got water, okay. So there's a couple things you can do. You can put the pump straight on as is and prime it and start pumping away. A lot of people do that. The problem is the pump doesn't perfectly seal. So air will come back in, the water will slowly go back down, back washing out the bottom of your well. And then every time you come out here to use your pump, you may have to prime it or it has to pull the water from a long ways up. Not really the end of the world. There's something you can put in called a check valve. I don't know if y'all can see down in there. You've got a spring loaded plunger. So you put it in this direction. Every time you pump, well, the plunger can come up, it pulls water up and around, and then the spring pushes the plunger back down. So your pipe is always primed ready, doesn't backwash your well out. This is what I use. This is actually my spare one for my pump up there. This is a good piece to put in. They're about $35, $45, but they're worth putting in. This is for an inch and a quarter pipe. All right, so let's go straight to the pipe like a normal install. All right, so the moment of truth. Anytime you put a new one of these wells on, you need to pour water in the top and prime this. I'm gonna have to fill it up a few times, maybe fill up the entire section of pipe right there before we get it to pull a good suction and uh, you know, pull up some water for us. Well, we've got ourselves a problem. I cannot get the water to pull up, and look at that. I cannot get the water to go down. That tells me that the bottom is completely sealed off. I must have went through one heck of a clay pocket. So here we are literally a few days later. I had to take time away from this project, but I discovered what the issue was. So I'm abandoning the well that's just about 60, 70 feet to our right, moving to a new location. When I pulled that drop pipe out, I discovered for the first time ever on our property, go figure, I found gray pipe clay. So that is very bad for a sand point well. First of all, gray pipe clay is that slick, just, nasty thick clay 
that's typically a gray color. Water does not penetrate through it well at all, so that's bad for a well. And it had slicked and gummed up my Sandpoint wellhead to the point I had to go out there and clean it out for quite a while. So that's why I couldn't hardly pull water into the well, and that's why water was not going back down the pipe out because it was sealed off solid. So instead of beating a new well in and spending a few hours wearing my body out, you're getting a surprise on this one. I'm gonna show you a second way to install one of these wells. So I just went to town and picked up a few things. First of all, I got some two inch PVC pipe right here, some high pressure pipes, nice thick wall and straight. We're about to water jet a well in nice and quick. So obviously I just showed you the cheap, easy DIY way to put one in by pounding. Now we're gonna water jet down. I'm not ordering special adapters that'll fit a fire hose online. I'm waiting for all that to ship in. I just went and found a reducer. This is a two and a half inch to two inch reducer at my local uh, plumbing supply store. I've got a fire hose nozzle that fits perfectly in there. We're not talking super high pressure here. And all they had was one that was threaded. So I bought a thread on adapter here that'll slip right over two inch pipe. Now you can see where we're heading. I've got this trash pump here hooked up to an IBC tote that has a couple hundred gallons of water in it. This is what I use for fire suppression on the property. It's kind of my off-grid homestead fire truck right here. By the way, we're gonna be building a bigger version of this in the future. And this pump right here puts out a tremendous amount of pressure, like 50 plus gallons a minute. So we shouldn't have a problem slipping this adapter on the end of the pipe. I may have to glue it if it pops off in my hand, hook the fire hose up, and now you see where we're heading. Might have to get up here on top of the ranger or even higher it looks like. And we're going to water jet straight down into the ground. As that water is shooting down this pipe into the ground, it's gonna be removing uh, the grass, the sand, hopefully no pipe clay over here. And it's gonna blow that all back up and out and kind of wash out a hole. Then we can just go put our pipe right down in it. You can either leave the PVC in there and pull it back up to where the uh, sand point is actually below this PVC pipe and you know groundwater's coming in and filling it. Or we can pull this completely back out and I can save this pipe and use it for another location, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Got a small three foot piece here. I'm gonna go ahead and water jet down into the ground that far so this longer pipe gets in the ground that much further before I have to get up on top of that ranger. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, that worked very well other than soaking myself and my camera. I see I'm going in a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna correct that now, then we'll stick the big pipe in. And I'm taking my microphone away from me because I'm gonna get it soaking wet, it appears. So it turns out the point on this sand point is too big to fit into two inch casing because I started changing my mind that I was gonna leave this to make this nice, easily removable and serviceable. Um, I may could slide on from a different direction, but I don't think I'm gonna worry with all that today. So let's pull this up. Man, that worked. That worked really, really well. I couldn't turn the pump all the way up or open the fire hose all the way up as well because it would just blow back out on me because I don't have threaded and sealed connections. But it didn't matter because I didn't need that much pressure. The only thing that worries me a little is I have hit something down there. I don't know if it's roots, probably not that deep. It's probably rock. So I may have to try to pound through it just a couple feet. The really good news is I'm looking down in this hole 
and I see water about three feet down, which does not surprise me because there's standing water in the woods right here at about a two foot elevation change. That's another big reason I wanted to stay in this area. I always have groundwater here. So let's put this in. It should go in nice and easy now. My goodness, y'all, I just went back up there and cleaned that sand point out some more. You would not believe how much clay was in it. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna have to pound down just a couple more feet right here through whatever the heck was holding my pipe up. All right, after a few more minutes of pounding, I have stopped. So obviously I have found a rock. So I wanted to go down about another eight inches, but it is what it is. I guess I've found a rock. All right, let me put some Teflon tape on this, thread the pump back on and pray <laughs> that after all this work, we have found water. Okay, let's prime this pump and see if we can get some water. Yes, this is so awesome. Now, it's really dirty, that's to be expected. Oh, what a glorious sight. Finally, after all this work, we have water. Let's see if we can get it to clear up. It's gonna take a little while after all that water jetting I did. Look at that. That is so awesome. <laughs> free water. All right, so now the cool part, what I like about this pitcher pump, it's got a nice hanger and the water shouldn't shoot right over the bucket. Okay, so this is exciting. Now we have us a backup free water source on the property. I've already ordered in another leather seal for this. It looks like your standard ones for all pumps fit. That's great, that's something I was concerned about. So I can rebuild this in the event that we ever have to heavily rely on it. I mean, overall, it's a very simple system. When it comes to the pump, I maybe wish there was like a bushing in here. It's just got a standard bolt, but everything else is very simplistic. Looks like I can keep some leather on hand and rebuild the bottom seals easily. I've already ordered leather cups. I really like the spout design, hanging a bucket, and uh, well, you've seen what I had to go through to get the pipe in the ground, but the sand point seems to be working. Now, if you're interested in any of this stuff, I'll have links all down in the description from everything that I bought, all the fittings, the pipes, you name it. Hopefully you don't run into pipe clay like I did. That's a bummer. I really wanted to be in that other location, but it just wouldn't work, and now I see why. You can't pull water out of thick, slick clay. So keep that in mind. You may have to experiment around on your property and find you a better location like I did today. So I hate that it took all the extra work in two locations to make this happen, but I'm kind of happy. Now you can see two ways that you can drill your well. One, just good old fashioned blood, sweat, and tears. Number two, if you happen to have a pump like this, well, you can water jet a well literally in two minutes versus potentially hours of hand pounding a well in. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad this is done. Well, speaking of done, I told y'all this is part one. We are now set up with water. All I need to do is secure this pipe up and cover this hole up so we don't get rodent contamination and everything else down in here. Coming on part two, I'm not even gonna tell you, but it's gonna be really exciting. Let's just say this is just the start of our off-grid water. You are not gonna wanna miss the next episode. We're gonna take this a big step further. It's gonna get exciting. And then I guess coming up on the future of the channel, since we now have us working water, obviously you wouldn't wanna drink this water. It's straight out of the ground. It's got contaminants in it um, and we're not very deep. So we're gonna build us say an off-grid type water filter for this. And then if you ever wanna drink this water, I highly suggest boiling it. That's with any case, unless you have a really deep, highly filtered ground well, like we do back up at the house. All right, thank y'all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me pour some sweat out and get soaking wet putting this well in. We'll catch you on the next video.